Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be talking about dimensionality reduction. Pretty quick video. So let's just start with what is dimensionality reduction. So let's say you have some training data, which is n rows by p columns. So you have n observations and p features, p predictors. The goal of dimensionality reduction is exactly what it sounds like, is to get the number of dimensions, number of features, number of predictors, number of columns down significantly. So we're basically trying to go from n by p matrix of training data to some n by k matrix of training data where k is supposed to be much smaller than p. Why would we want to do this? So a couple reasons that come up are storage. Obviously, if you're going in the realm of big data, big data takes a lot of storage on whatever machine you're running it on. So it would be nice if we could compact this data into a smaller space and hopefully not lose too much information along the way. Another consideration is the model training time. So obviously, if you have a larger amount of data, your model might take a lot longer to train because it might have to consider many, many features. If you have less features, then your model will probably take less time to train. And finally, maybe a lesser one, but also one that's often overlooked is interpretability. This is not going to be true in all the dimensionality reduction techniques. As we'll see, one of the techniques does have this and one does not. But under certain situations, this actually helps you isolate some of the features or columns that you care the most about and you can throw away the ones that are not very important. So it could also be helpful for that. But it's very, very important to note in this video that when you do dimensionality reduction, however you do it, you're always going to be losing some data. And this is just intuitive. I don't think it requires a formal proof. You could do a formal proof, but basically if you're going from this much stuff and you're trying to press it into this much space, you literally just have less numbers. And so you can't capture all of the original dynamics in the original data set. And so the real goal of dimensionality reduction is not purely just give me less data, it's to compact my data, but lose as little of the valuable information as possible. So keep as much of the important stuff and throw away the stuff that's irrelevant. And so let's talk about two methods to do dimensionality reduction. There are many out there, but I wanna go over two intro methods that you'll probably learn early on during your studies in machine learning. So the first one here is called PCA or principal components analysis. Now this is not a video where I'm gonna go into all the depth of PCA. I have videos on that, which I'll link in the description below. But just to remind you, here's a, a very common picture you see during PCA. You might have some two dimensional data, X1, X2 coordinates, and all these green X's are your data points. You can see they more or less line up along this red line. And so we project them into a lower dimensional space. In this case, we're projecting our two dimensional data into a one dimensional linear space. So you notice when you project these green X's onto this red line, you're still gonna be losing some data because the projections are gonna be basically smooshing them into this one dimensional space. But because they already line up with the line pretty well, you're losing a very small amount of data. And so that's what's going on here. You're projecting your data into a K dimensional space where K is less than the original number of dimensions. Now the pros of this is it's efficient. So if you go through the entire process of PCA, it's basically built to compress your data in such a way that you're going to be retaining as much of the variation in the original data set as possible. That's the entire goal of PCA. And so it's no surprise that it's doing that in an efficient way. But by being very efficient, you actually lose a lot in terms of interpretability. For example, to go a little bit deep into PCA for a second, you take the covariance matrix of your data, you find the eigenvectors of that, you project your data onto the eigenvectors of your covariance matrix. Um, obviously kind of a complex process, and so you lose a little bit of what's actually going on, what does my transform data represent anymore, because you're kind of now having to think about your transform data as coordinates in this new dimension, this new basis, basically, new coordinate space. And so it's a little bit tricky. It's not impossible, but it's a little tricky to map that back to your original features. So it's important to note these pros and cons. Now, the other major method I've seen in intro machine learning courses to do dimensionality reduction is lasso. So we've probably seen this formulation many, many times, but this is just a regularization of ordinary least squares. And we typically have this in two flavors. We have lasso and ridge, and today is the lasso formulation. So we're taking the true labels minus the predicted labels, we're taking the L2 norm of that. And then this extra term we tack on is for regularization. And when we have a L1 norm, as we do there, this is called lasso regularization. And the key feature of lasso regularization, as we know, is that it's going to send many of your beta i's to exactly zero. And so we can actually use this for feature selection because we can run this. So let's say we fix some kind of lambda, which is a parameter. And then we can just pick the variables whose beta i's are not sent to exactly zero. 
And in some sense, the model considers these as important or predictive of this target variable y. So the pros here are that this is interpretable. Notice we're not projecting our data into any dimensional space. We're simply just eliminating columns that are not helpful in predicting this target variable y. And so at the end of the day, we have a smaller set of columns, but the key observation is that those columns are coming from the original data set itself. We're not transforming the features, so you can just say that, oh, this column was important, this column got thrown away, easy to interpret. And the other kind of bonus is that it takes the response into account. Notice that Y is explicitly taken into account here, which is not actually true for PCA. And of course, the con here is that it's not going to be as efficient as PCA because, again, PCA was designed to compress your data in the most efficient way possible. This is simply just marking columns for deletion. So it's not going to be as efficient in compressing your data. So I hope this very quick kind of run through of dimensionality reduction techniques was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. I'll catch you next time.